second decision is it's all about your mind takes control of you you have to say fuck you i run this motherfucker so the one second decision is just that you're in a situation where life is sucking let's say you're in extreme cold water and your life is flashing before your eyes every time that wave goes over your head your thought process is i gotta get the fuck out of this water and you're in hell week and you're hour one of 130 fucking hours it's all fun and games, okay? Because at the beginning of Hell Week, the guns are going off. It's like a pep rally. So you're fucking hyped up. And your boys are linked arms and you're getting sprayed. And it's like a fucking pep rally. The instructor yelling at you, bombs are going off, concussion grenades, blanks from N60s. Yeah, hoo ya, fuck yeah, fuck yeah, yeah, motherfucker, yeah. But then what they do is they shut that shit off. They shut it off. All that hoo ya, all that hype gets real quiet and they march you out to that surf zone for something called surf torture. And it's that water, that Pacific Ocean is cold as shit. So no more pep rally. You're now in your head, you're linked arms with you know your brothers beside you. You don't know if they're gonna be there long or not. You don't care, you think about yourself. You lay back and that first wave hits you. Your mind goes straight from hour two all the way to hour 130. You can't process five days of this shit. You're now in a, you're, you're now in a fuck you, like I gotta get out of here. You're in fight or flight. It's cold, I can't be cold this long. And then this is where that one second decision comes in. You forgot every reason why you wanted to be there. You don't care about seals. You don't care about any of this. You don't care about fighting for your country. You don't care about that gaudy gold trident that they put on your chest. You don't care about any of that shit. All you want to do is go back home. You want the warmth. You may want something to eat. You want your girl to hold you. All those things of comfort are there in that one second. So what I do in that one second, because we all think about quitting when shit's hard. But what you have to do in that one second is hard to process information during pain because that pain takes over and you can't think rationally. You're thinking about fight or flight, save yourself. That's not a rational thought. It's not a thought that's gonna get you through hard times. Most people fail that one second. In that one second, I physically stayed in that water because if I get out of the water, I quit. So I physically stay in the water, but mentally I'm on the fucking beach with the fucking instructors. And the instructors, it's cold outside, so they got these parkas on. They got their cup of fucking Joe. And they're warm because they've already been through it. So now it's your turn to go. So mainly I get back with them. I'm still in the water physically, but mainly I'm back with them. I'm chilling. I got my parka on. And now I'm thinking logically because I'm warm now. Mentally, I'm warm. I've taken that one second. Let's not quit yet, Goggins. Let's fucking think about your options. Where are you going to end up if you quit this shit? Where are you going to go? What are you going to say to yourself? Because you know you're going to get warm. The second you get out of this water, you're going to take a shower and you're going to be warm. And you could be. And in five days, you could be out. So I start thinking logically. I calm my brain down because your brain just wants to get the fuck out. Ring the bell, put your helmet down, get warm, and then you're really fucked. And these are the things you have to think about in one second decision. So that's what that's all about. It's about gaining control of your mind, putting things back in the proper perspective, and then saying, I really do want to be here. It's all about your mind takes control of you. You have to say, fuck you. I run this motherfucker. Failure is the ultimate thing, man. I failed so many times before. That's why I don't look at failure anymore as failure. I look at it as my first, second, and third attempt. You'll never meet a hater doing better than you. True statement. So I started making these mixtapes with all of these hate messages about people talking shit. And it became such a source of fuel that it was amazing because I know why you hate me. You hate me because you're probably in the bed right now. You're probably an underachiever. You're probably somebody who doesn't want to do anything with your life. So I make you question everything about yourself. So I'm going to continue making you question yourself by coming out here and being even more successful. These people who hate on people, I've studied them. And I gained a lot of knowledge from them because I gained a lot of knowledge from myself when I was in that dark place. What do you think most people get wrong about motivation? They think it's a permanent fix. They think it's something that that is a constant. They think that maybe once I get it, I'm going to hold on to it. And that's the thing about that I was telling you, that I always talk about. It's nothing is permanent. Nothing is permanent. And a lot of times you have to learn to perform without motivation. You have to learn to perform without purpose. You have to learn to perform a lot of different things. And that's what people think. They think I need to have this motivation to work out, to study, to be better. So if they don't have it, they just don't fucking do it. And that's where you fail. You have to learn to train your mind well beyond motivation. If you have motivation, that's great. That's some kindling to the fire. All it takes is a little bit of fucking spark. You can burn a whole forest up. 
But motivation, you have to learn to exist without it. You have to learn to be, you have to be your best self and your least motivated. And that's the tricky part about all that shit. Motivation is just a word. You have to have these different things in your mind on where you want to go and know that motivation is not going to get me there because I'm not going to always be motivated. And discipline is good too. But without a clear headspace, there's no discipline. So let's say we have a circuit break, okay? And I'm loading everything up to one fucking circuit. Just load it up. It's gonna fucking blow. And once that thing blows, man, the circuit's all fucked up. You gotta have each thing plugged into the right spot, like a fucking crowded garage. You can't put anything in it. Once your brain is crowded, discipline is great. Motivation is great. But if you can't fit shit in your brain because it's all fucking cluttered with shit, there's no discipline. You may have it sometimes when it fits in that crowded garage of your mind, but you don't have the consistency that you need to have with that discipline. You're organizing your mind so you can put that discipline. So a lot of people talk about discipline. Okay, great. Why do you fall off the fucking wagon? Why can't I continue with this routine? Going to the gym, being better, waking up early, eating the right foods. It's because maybe it's your kids, maybe it's your wife, maybe it's your job, and it's all just stuffed in your fucking brain. You don't have it compartmentalized and organized in these nice shelves. Like you look in the garage, it's all fucking a nice organized militant garage. Hey, where are my dumbbells? Right there. A lot of people whose brain, hey, where's my dumbbells? Uh, let me look. They're fucking throwing shit. They're looking through totes. They're all fucked up. So where am I going to put discipline in that mind if I can't find other shit? You got to be able to find all these different things in your mind. Oh, I can put discipline right there. I can put consistency right there. I can put all these things right there in that spot. So that's what I'm talking about. If your life is not organized, and your life being everything around you because it takes one little fucked up piece of an outside interference to clutter your whole mind. And people don't get that. Your mind has to always be clear. That's why I, that's why I meditate two hours every single night because I refresh, I reorganize the garage, which is my mind, every night. So then discipline's in there, organization, everything's in this right spot. So when I wake up, I'm ready to go.